What's up, 418? Um, I just wanted to share something with you guys real quick. Um, revival has begun. Uh, you guys are a part of it. You guys are making it happen. Uh, not just because it's just you, but also because the Lord is just hearing our prayers. I've been praying. My wife's been praying. We've been praying. The leaders have been praying for revival, for um, an awakening inside of each and one of each one of you. And I believe we began to see that. I think that you know that we've seen that. And what I want to do is just encourage you and uh, give you a couple warnings because there are some things that can stop revival. And one of the things that will stop revival, one of the biggest things is sin. Uh, sin is um, it, it's deadly. Guys, we cannot afford to play with sin. We cannot afford to play with being disobedient to God's word, to afford being, uh, playing, being disobedient to, to what God is telling you as an individual to do. We have to move on what God is saying because if we don't do that, then we are actually going to stop the revival, stop the things that God wants to do in this city. I want to remind you about a story of a guy named Achan. And uh, what happened was um, the Israelites, they went and they had the battle of Jericho. And uh, in this battle, they, they had a great victory. No one thought they could win, but they had a great victory because God came in and, um, and he, made, he made them win. Well, what happened was, is that God told them, you are not to take any of the spoils of war from any, any of the goods that they had. You're not supposed to take anything. You leave that uh, for me. Well, this one guy, Achan, he decided that he was going to disobey God and take it. Well, uh, they went to fight their next battle, which should have been super easy for them, and they ended up losing. And finally, they went together. They said, God, why are we losing? He said, there is sin in your camp. Somebody has taken what I told them not to take, and it is causing everyone to actually uh, be affected and to fall. And so I want you guys to know, number one, is that your sin does affect the rest of 418. I don't want you to think that just because you're doing something. I'm not trying to lay a guilt trip on you, but just because you are... Um, just because you think that your sin is your sin and you're going to do what you want to do, you think it doesn't affect people. It does. It affects all of us. And so we want you to know that you play a great role in what God wants to do. Remember this, the payment for sin is death, Romans 6, 23. And that death, that word death actually is, is speaking of a separation. So if you're feeling far from God, check to see, are you in sin? Um, have you done something that, that God has specifically said you're not to do, whether through his word, through someone else, um, or just spoken to you? Are you not doing something he's told you to do um, and then are you spending time with them if you're not spending time with God yes you're not gonna feel close to God but sin also brings a separation between us and that we don't have as much joy the joy that we had taken away if you were dealing with depression then you felt like it was gone and then you felt you, you started sinning and it, you can't do that. You're going to feel that thing come back because you have separated yourself from the one who brings the joy, the brings the life. Here's the thing you need to know too. Sin equals death. Sin is not a joke. Sin isn't something that we can just mess with. And guys, I love you way too much for us to continue to just live mediocre Christian lives, to live lives that are, are powerless and, and are ineffective because we want to live in our sin. Guys, Sin does not equal a mistake. Sin equals direct rebellion to God. So we have to understand this and take this seriously. Guys, we cannot walk with God and walk in sin at the same time. It is impossible. The Bible says that if we keep sin in our heart and don't deal with it, that the Lord will not hear our prayers. You have to realize that. Okay, we are believing God to do great things in this city through you, through us at 418. God is going to do great things, but guess what? You have to do your part. You have to continue to let God to show you where you're sinning and allow Him to let you, let Him take that sin and remove it and repent and turn from it and change your mind about it. God has called you, He loves you. You have great things planned for your life, so please. Repent if you're in sin. Move forward. Don't be aching. Don't be the one that's bringing sin into the camp. Go out. Change your world and let God change you to become more like him. I love each and every one of you. Pastor Leanna loves each and every one of you. Please hear what I have to say. Take it to heart and move on. It does no good if you just hear it. Say you're right, and then don't, don't do anything about it. God has called us to a higher standard. He says, come out from the unclean thing. Do not touch it. Be separate and watch what he does in us. You'll see great things. I love you. We'll see you on Wednesday. Hope you guys have a great, great week. Love each and every one of you. Bye. There is a power so much greater, a force that is stronger.